I'm here in London at the PokerStars European Poker Tour, where I caught up with former winner Victoria Corrin to ask if she's excited about this year's event. I'm excited about every poker tournament I ever play, but the EPT London, it's in my hometown, it's a tournament I won a couple of years ago. Just watching the big Americans and Europeans coming into London to play poker makes me feel very patriotic. And because you've won it in the past, do you think people kind of are you differently on the table? Or maybe people will go to take you out of the tournament, things like that? To be honest, no. This is what the big champions always say. People are, you know, treat them differently because they're a champion. Uh, you know, I think people will see me as a ditzy blonde at the table for as long as I play. Do you know what I mean? They're nearly all men. A lot of them are your older kind of Texan guys. I could win 87 tournaments and they'd look at me and go, that's not a poker player. Which is good for me. Yeah, yeah. I can secretly take their money. Well, I was going to ask you about this. Do you think that's, well, you, you do think that's an advantage, perhaps, to be eyed in, in that way by people who don't know who you are and perhaps don't think you're a threat to them? It's not even that it's an advantage. It's the trick of poker is you have to make everything into an advantage. You know, you've got to be totally self-aware. You've got to play to your strengths. And it's always good to look dumber than you are. You know, I know players who deliberately will play in a Hawaiian shirt and pretend to be drunk. Or older guys, you know, I play with some kind of 75-year-old men, sharp as tacks, they know exactly what they're doing. But they try and look a bit bumbly, a bit forgetful, you know, and I play up slightly the Barbara Windsor thing, you know what I mean? I sort of giggle a lot and go, oh, is it me to act? You know, this is the key in life as well as poker. You've got to know how you come across to people, know what they think of you, and turn that to your advantage. Okay, so what would your kind of tips be for someone um, who was perhaps competing in this tournament for the first time um, to kind of go forward? And... I think if you're new to poker, the main thing to remember to begin with is that bluffing is a much smaller part of the game than people think. You know, you look at the movies and you think it's all about bluffing. Actually, it's not. 70, 80, 90% of the game is working out when you have the best hand and making money from it. So in a tournament like this, you know, there's no need to come blundering in, shoving your chips there with nothing. You know, you can play carefully. It's a slow tournament. Try and work out where you are, when you're in front. Keep betting when you've got the best hand. Know when to give up when you've got the worst hand. And keep bluffing as a sort of emergency last resort when it's your only way to win the pot. So how important would you say kind of knowing your maths and knowing your percentages is to, to the game? Obviously, everything that you know is an advantage. You know, the more you know about stuff, the better you're going to do. And if you have very strong mathematical skills, use that as a strength. You know, judge your calls and raises according to how much is in the pot. If that's not a strength of yours, if maths isn't a big thing for you, go with the psychology. Go with who feels nervous, who seems really confident, who can I push around at this table, who should I defer to. You know, again, it's all about knowing what you can do and just maximising that. Okay, and away from the big tournaments, do you play with your friends at home? Do you have poker nights with your mates? I do. I have a home game every Tuesday at my house. Quite small money. You know, I've won maybe a million, two million dollars playing poker. I will happily play at my house every Tuesday night. If I lose 30 pounds, I'm furious. I want to kill somebody. You know, on that night, it's all about who's paying for the pizza tonight, old jokes, old insults, and trying to win a tenner is the biggest thing in the world. Away from playing poker, do you play other card games? Do you? you know? I, I mean, I will play any game. I really will. I play quite a lot of bridge. I'll play, you know, Scrabble, a lot of online Scrabble. But I mean, really, if you said to me now, I've just thought of a game, the two of us throw sticks at the wall. As long as you told me it was a game, I'd be excited. I'd want to play. So it's that competitive nature that's perhaps got you it's this far. It's partly competitive, but part of it is just kind of playful. It's a lot of poker is just not wanting to grow up, you know. When you're a kid, the idea of staying up late at night and playing games is the most exciting thing in the world. When you were growing up then, did you have like a, a favourite uncle or a grandpa who kind of would play these games you, that your parents wouldn't know? My, my, my grandpa used to play blackjack with us. No one played poker. But my dad's family were all, you know, they were all gamblers. And my granddad used to, yeah, deal blackjack and take all our money. I think grandparents are meant to sort of, to sort of slip you a couple of pounds to buy ice cream. My grandpa was the opposite. We slipped him a couple of pounds through the blackjack for him to buy cigarettes and chocolates. There you go. Well, it served you well, hasn't it, all that experience? Yeah, it worked out in the end. <laughs> OK. Um, could we just play a, a quick hand now, so you can yes. perhaps give me a few yeah. tips? Right, you want to play now? Yes, great. Okay, we need blinds in. Right, okay. You put two of them in, 25.50. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be me to act first, because I'm right. a small blind. 
Okay, I'm going to make it a hundred to play. Right, okay. So I need to put in 50 to... But you can fold or yeah, you can no, raise. I, I'm going to... You're going to play I'm on? I'm not going to raise. I'm okay, all right, there you go. Well, good luck. See, now I've told you I'm not that confident. Yeah, you probably shouldn't just admit to that right off. Dangerous flop. Okay, so now... Um, you can bet or check. Right, I'm going to bet. I'm going to bet 200. Are you? You know what? I've got a very big hand here, but I'm going to fold it. Show what it is, ace king. That is a big hand. Right. I think you've improved. I think you've outdrawn me. Because I'm folding. Okay. Are you, you going to show? Of course. <gasps> Bluffing! Bluffing! Right. That's put me in a bad mood for the tournament now. Okay. I'll be calling everybody and it'll be your fault. Well, well I was then. hoping to get a queen and then I would have had some sort of... Yes. Straight there, but... If you bet because you were hoping to get a queen, <laughs> that's not a very good bet because no. it's not very likely to come. Okay. If you were betting because you thought I wouldn't be able to call and you were bluffing, that's a brilliant bet. You got me to fold a huge hand. Well, that, yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. So I was just bluffing when I said I was waiting for the queen. That, that's an old, uh, that's an old expression, isn't it? Never draw to an inside straight. It's an old, uh, old saying. Right, one more, and then um, <laughs> All right. we'd better call it a day. So when I play next week, I should wear a Hawaiian shirt, should I? Maybe you some should. sort of. All right, all in. Yeah, me too. Okay, fine. But you don't have to put no, in I don't, more. You no. only have to match the two fifty. Oh, that's a shame because I've got a great hand. Have you? Yeah. Just my luck. I'm not on form today. All right, on their backs. This is what you've got to be. Oh, you got the threes. All right, we're racing. Good luck. Oh dear, you've got a flush draw and everything. Look at that. You get the lot. Brilliant. Thanks ever so much.